Hi everyone and welcome this time to Castellon Airport. This airport is uh, free. It's done on X-Plane 11. I'm running now X-Plane 11 version 11.35. Just that went out in the in the market a couple of days ago. The new release. Okay. As I say, this, this airport it's, it's really really nice. I, I like it a lot. It's it's my hometown. That's where I spend some time between here and London. Uh, it's really realistic. It's exactly as, as, as you could say, the parking space. In, indeed, this is culture from um, a local artist called uh, Ripo. Ripo, yes. Okay. We've got a tower of control just over here. Yes, let's let's take a look onto onto it. Okay. Yes, let's. This is the main entrance for the passengers and the people. These are it's usually used just. Nowadays, I think it's on Tuesday, Thursday, and some Saturdays. Okay, mainly by Ryanair and Wizzair. They fly to London, Bulgaria, and some some sort of places. We are not going to be flying the 737 that we can see here. Okay, but we will be using this Tegnam. This uh, ultralight uh, engine, and I'll explain you the the reason just in in a bit. Okay. It's this beautiful aircraft from from here. Let's go into the cockpit, okay? And let's make a, also just a, a review of this, uh, as I've said, a uh, ultralight um, airplane. Okay, it's a uh, Tegnam. The model is a uh, P22. I leave all the links uh, anyway below. So if you want to buy it, I think it's it's pretty nice. Usually, what I do when I go to a new Airport, it's just taking the no 737 or any Airbus or something big, and then I usually like to do some BFR flights, visual flights, and then I usually take this this small plane. Okay, mm, the weight just uh, allowed to take off it's less than 600 kilos, so it's considered as a ultralight um, airplane. That means that doesn't require a pilot license, okay? That you'd require for a Cessna or something heavier. When it takes uh, off, just with 20 hours, you can obtain a license for flying ultralight uh, aircrafts. Um, once we do the external review, I'll show you also the, the white. It measures, uh, I think, eight and a half meters uh, from wing to, to wing, has a capacity just for only to two people let's look at it inside if you'd like yes the one the pilot driving and a passenger or or the guy that is taking its lessons like we can have a dog here probably or a cat <laughs> as far as it's uh, tied with the lid okay um empty weight it's uh i think it's 350 kilos or something like and the maximum then payload would be 269 all, all this data is in the documentation provided by by the manufacturer of this uh, airplane okay um let's take a look onto the whole cockpit the the panel so i can explain you some some tips that that we've got okay so this being the airspeed indicator okay which we will talk about it it takes over at around just we can talk about it right now so you start familiarizing yourself with with this plane okay we've got a few markings as you probably could see here let me see if i can zoom yes okay the um, white area uh which arrives until here it's all the until yeah around 70 almost 70 17 hours. I think it's the exact amount. It's just let me check. It's 67. Okay, that's where we could have uh, all the flaps extended. Um, rotation speed is uh, just before arriving to 40 knots. That's the way we've got this uh, blue uh, area. Operations uh, well, without flaps, it would be then from this 67 through the whole green area, which is 110 knots. In yellow, uh, operations are really restricted, okay, and, and should be just only achieve these um, speeds. Well, when there's a almost no air and anyway any 
kind of correction that we do in the plane should be done very calm and, and very quietly, okay? And the red line is the, the one which, if we pass that, the, the brain could uh, just generate some damage and, and even we could just fall. Okay, <laughs> so we don't expect today, during this flight, to, to exceed this, this speed at all. We will be flying, I guess, around 100 knots or even less because we are just planning to to do a circuit in in Castellón, okay? It's in the Mediterranean coast. We've got a trim indicator. In this plane, the trim is uh, electrical, so you will not find the typical wheel that other planes usually have around here. It's action through these joystick buttons, okay, in the real one. There's a space just to add some, some clocks, which you could with the um, plane editor in X-Plane. What else we have? Okay, altimeter, which tells us what's the our current height above ground level. Uh, sorry, above ground level, no. Uh, above uh, sea level. So now we are at, uh, this airport is uh, 1,000 feet, 1,100, almost 1,080 something. Okay, we'll adjust later the Q&H. Um, what else? Attitude indicator, as uh, the master engine is uh, off, you will see that this seems a little, well, it's, it's not as it should be once we switch it on, okay? The, our bank indicator, which will help us to do coordinated uh, turns. Switches, which will describe them, all of them. Uh, the gyro or the compass, okay? Which we will need also to adjust to our current um, heading, okay? We'll do that. Uh, later, once we align ourselves with um, the runway heading, the vertical speed indicator. This will tell us whether we are climbing or descending. Okay, with this needle, and in our right, yep. Yeah, well, then we've got a GPS, a radio. Okay, uh, autopilot. It's very basic, but we could maybe use it later. Flaps lever, okay, fuel pumps, uh, pitot heat, avionics, uh, strobe lights, landing lights, and navigation lights. These two buttons here, this and this, can also be, be configured, okay, with the airplane editor. Well, something funny, which I really don't recommend anyone to use it, is that we can change the speed from kilometer hour, which is not used at all in, in aviation, to, to our speed, okay? This is just much better, in my view. It's, it's just showing as a indicated air speed uh, that we are flying in in respect to to the wind that it's surrounding us, or the, the air, better said, not the wind, okay? And the same happens here on these um, revolutions per minute indicator that we can change it to the engine or to the torque, okay? Usually I have it in the in the engine. We can also just let's let's go to the external view and I'll see, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, these covers which we've got in the wheels to be more aerodynamic, we can change them and remove them from here. Okay, just clicking on this um, toggle. So if we move outside, you'll see now the plane seems a little bit more ugly. Basically, it's, a, it's a, about a aerodynamics, okay? So we are going to leave them on. Uh, flaps indicator for takeoff, it will be around here. Let me just hold on, move into the zoom. Okay, this here is the um, temperature for the carburetor, I think. Oil temperature pressure for the oil, pressure for fuel, left indicator for the fuel on our left, also the same for the right, external temperature, voltimeter and, and amperimeter, okay, to indicate also how our batteries are and whether they are charging or not. So we now have noticed that we've got enough battery. As I've said, the flight that we are going to do is just a um, circuit. It's a BFR circuit. Uh, in this airport, we can fly both 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 sides, left or or right circuit. I've also configured the. Just let me be sure. I think I've set up the weather 
to not have any wind. I don't want to demonstrate anything ar this time around cross wind techniques or something like. So yes, it's a um, cavox, so it means there's no wind, there's no clouds, there's absolutely nothing. Okay. Apply change or discharge change it doesn't matter. Okay, what else do we have? Yep, we've got the throttle here, which is just to increase our, our speed and the revolutions on, on our engine. Uh, the heating for the carburetor, which we are not going to use as it's not cold. Uh, fuel selector, which we can choose from which uh, wing, that's where usually the deposits are, also in, in this plane. We want to, um, to be feeding the, the engine, left or, or right, or just cut off, which would be in this position. Okay, left and right. So be careful never to put it like that during fight, otherwise you'll just switching of your your engines because they will not be fitted by by fuel and this is the um, parking brake okay so without anything else well yes this plane has um i think it's a maximum crosswind speed allowed for 22 knots this time it's not going to to impact us as at all as we'll as we'll see we can also yes let me i don't know whether i could zoom a little yep oh. Just doing like that. You can open the the cabin. It's it's really cool. Okay, and we should close it now. Yep, done. So let's close it and let's start with the checklist. You've got the checklist here. Just in case anyone doesn't know, there's also a nice plugin called I think Explain Checklist or something like. Okay, just yes. you could load the one that is provided by <coughs> the manufacturer which is this one, okay? Before engine start and then all the checks that we should that we should do. Fine, so let's do it by the book and following all the steps, okay? That a normal pilot would do when it's trying to, to fly this, okay? Why checklists are important? Well, just before we go to the air, we want to be 100% sure that everything will work as expected so uh, and, and this basically is a matter of reducing absolutely to zero as much as risks as, as we can okay the zero absolute unfortunately doesn't exist but uh, doing this uh, checklist we will ensure that we've followed all the steps and everything should be flying fine during during our flight okay so we'll do first of all we just go move inside the the plane so you'll be sitting somewhere like here let me just move maybe a little bit down okay what we need to check then easy uh, all required paperwork is on on board so any flight plans any gps any whatever documentation that we need from the airplane should be uh, kept inside okay the weight and balance so we need to know that who is going to fly with us and then we just we we should uh, ensure well we, in fact we, we we could not uh, so i mean in reality we could find where the center of gravity for for the plane is just um with two balances on on each of the three wheels well not two three really then and then applying some calculations methods that are also described on the training documentation let's go and do this then flight configuration no, hold on. It would be here. Weight and balance. We are going to increase our weight to 150 because we'll be flying myself and someone else. Um, fuel 20 and another 20 on the right. You'll see as soon as we increase this. Yep, okay. That's the maximum weight that has, as I've said before. 150. Okay, 170, and then we are exceeding by 2 kilos. Okay, it's 600 uh, kilos, the maximum weight allowed. Okay, so 80 plus 2, 160. We don't need the tanks full. Um, look, just uh, I think the maximum would be, yeah, 70 kilos of fuel. That would give us for almost five hours flying, okay? So we can do something really, really nice. Let's say that, no, no, just for today, 
25 kilos we make the load of it uh, balanced okay and yes done apply changes okay as we've seen our fuel indicators both have increased okay and then the next is that we need to check that our safety belt will work oh by the way someone is on the right just because we, we increase our, our weight okay we need to check whether we can lock and unlock it's 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 important <laughs> basically if you had an accident and you want to quit and you couldn't unlock the seat belts then well <laughs> just imagine what could happen if there's a fire or something like that okay um, parking brake must be set so it is we could adjust also through this wheel the friction for the throttle although i don't think it's reproduced here so it's a uh, softer or harder yes to to move it okay to what the pilot pre prefers um ignition switches must be off which is this we don't want the engines to be running at all or generating any kind of electricity um the master switch which is this one in the left we'll switch it on we can check then that the generator light which is this one uh, has been illuminated and and it's yep here okay so if i switch it off you'll see this light is off okay sorry that's the other generator so we switch on the generators we can also switch on the alternative one this uh, this model in this case it's a uh, equipped with um, an alternative uh, generator okay um, the fuel pump we are going to switch it on also you'll see here that the pressure for the fuel has increased to five psi's okay we should also hear we cannot hear it here because i've just mm, moved down the audio for the aircraft uh, but we should hear the um, pump already bleeding and, and, and providing a uh, fuel to to the to the engines okay we could extend our flaps which we can do through this lever here okay and then we could check just that ourselves in the window flaps we've got them down so this is a pre-flight uh, check okay and move them back again what else we are here in flaps extend uh, the trim trimmer yep should be centered and so it is as it's electronical before when we've switched the engines off or when the master switch was off we couldn't see this green line now we can so we found it's completely centered I'll explain also later probably what the trim and, and how how is it been being used okay activate the control in both directions checking for trouble image and some indication okay stall warning just check that there's no stall and navigation lights and strobe lights we could switch them on just to check that everything landing even it's um, with lights as we can see here yep the strobe ones are position um well the strobe lights will not be working unless the which are the ones are blinking in the wings will not be working un unless we've got the engine running okay we've got the landing light um, and everything should be fine then the last check that we do is just check our fuel okay it's not telling here as uh, how many liters we have but we we need to check that um, during our pre-flight uh, checklist while we go outside okay so now it would be fine switching off everything and again also here it's not very realistic what we are going to do but i'm going to, to explain by the way don't take this as a, any kind of instruction i'm not an instructor uh, i've flown this plane yes i'm familiar with it yes i am but that doesn't mean by any meaning that uh, what I'm saying is right and what your instructor is saying is, is wrong. Okay, just the instructor is always uh, completely right. I'm always completely wrong. Okay, just to be 
clear. Then let's just start then the external inspection, which usually, uh, as you need to jump through the wing to move up, it started through here and then we'll be turning around the, the plane checking for different stuff. Okay, so fuel, we need to look at the fuel. Just if you open it, you, you have some, some measures so you could know quickly how much fuel you've got on, on board. Uh, you need to be sure that it's completely locked so you don't lose this <laughs> while you are flying and then the fuel starts uh, just falling around, okay? Um, the pitot tube, which is, I guess, here, hopefully we can see it, yes. We should remove the covers that we have. Uh, while the plane is uh, parked, usually this is uh, covered just to avoid, uh, I don't know, any insects or even eyes or anything getting inside. Otherwise, we would receive uh, false indications about uh, our speed and we could have a serious accident. Okay, so now we remove them and we ensure that they are completely clean so the air can flow uh, through the um, pitot tube. Okay, um, we need to check the wings, yes, the, these profiles to be that they are completely fine as this is the, the case. We'll move back to the wing. Yes, let me put into here and manually what we will do is just move it up and down and check also that the lever inside it's moving okay to reflect the movement so these are the ailerons okay we should move this we should also check the flaps are completely fine and all the fixations are perfect there are no yes just you you hold hold it and you notice that it is a uh, firm okay that there's no dancing on, on it at all. What else? Yeah. Well, yes, the um, pressure of the um, wheels. We need to check all of them. Also, if you've got a device that tells you the, the pressure, then even better. Usual inflation here should be around 23, 25 psi, okay, or 1.6 uh, bars. The tire condition, so that will also ensure us if, if we need by whatever reason to land on a wet uh, runway that they've got all the stripes and whatever is expected to be on on the wheels otherwise we'll need to to replace them uh, we move back okay to the tail and we are going just to do the same hold them with our hands move them up down okay and see that they can move free also just we need to check that there's no friction here at all okay the same with our rudder okay we should turn it it will be a little bit harder because it's usually also connected to our front wheel okay but we should be able to turn it with our with our hands without any any issue okay we check that again there's no damage no stones had hit it so the plane is completely fine externally okay we move then to the right of the plane and, and we repeat again the same procedures uh, check that the flaps uh, are firm here uh, move the ailerons up and, and down okay we move forward in this wing, we've got uh, in this case not all the Tecnams uh, P22, they they have it, but there's um, this switch that you can use just to detect when the plane is going to enter in install. Okay. Uh, well, just yes, we check the, again the the profile of our wings to check that they are fine, pressures, and then we would go to the engine. Unfortunately, we cannot open it. Okay, but well, also the the propellers and and it's fine and they are well well aligned. Um, just remove any core that we could have here just to have them firmly to the to the chassis. Okay, remove any any stripes that we would have, and then we need just to open the engines. Uh, we could put some special heaters for the engine, especially during winter, to ensure that the engine is not very cold okay and, and ensure a, an easier 
switched on of the of the engine uh, there shouldn't be any foreign objects and stuff like that uh, we need to review all the levels there for the cooling circuit uh, just to be sure that it has the optimum levels for oil and everything and even we could pull from here and check our suspensions okay that they are working as as we would expect unfortunately this is not something that we could do <laughs> uh, during the flight okay so that's the whole um, external checklist okay once we've gone that done just we close back the the engine cover we've checked the lights that they were fine we remove the um, chocks if we had uh, any chocks placed uh, we put them in again inside the plane together with the cover of the pitot tube and we would go back again in inside the plane okay so here we go as you've seen as if increased the um, payload there's a beautiful girl <laughs> with with us okay so she'll be flying with us and without saying anything so she will not disturb okay then let's go move to the before start checklist okay we need to ensure again that the parking brake is set and so it is flight controls we've checked them but we will check them again up down and then i usually do these circles it would be also interesting while we are doing this just yes, to put the external view to ensure that all the parts that we are moving okay are turning as, as we expect aileron yep trim everything it's it's working fine the throttle should be on idle so it's here we adjust again the friction locker as i've mentioned and then we can already start the master switch okay so we do with the generator lights it goes on um, the trim control again centered very important um, we could switch the trim to the left so we are sure that it's the pilot on the left uh, the one that it will be flying from here we could change also who's got the the command and the, the who is the pilot flying okay so we ensure we've got it on the pilot seat mm, landing lights we've checked them before but we could look at the amperimeter okay whenever we turn some lights it's uh, moving this will consume the battery so we are going to switch them off okay and we check the fuel quantity and that basically it matches the the fuel that we've measured before on our wings okay to ensure that we've got enough fuel for the trip that we are going to do for our flight okay mm, adjust our seat uh, ensure that this uh, canopy is uh, closed now it's open so we should go back and close it uh, again and then we could start the the engines okay just we finished the before start checklist and now it starts the, the start engine uh, checklist brakes again we ensure that they are set so we'll press here okay okay hold on brakes are set yes master switch on fuel selector valves both on so we've got ref i'm sorry uh right left so it should be on both we wait for a little electric fuel pump to on let me move back here electric fuel pump which is this one it's already in on throttle idle chokes as needed with with yes it's it's this okay it's not cold so we can leave it as as is we ensure that there's no one uh around us and as it's the the case okay because the next thing that we are going to do it's all there's no one in the propeller we could switch on the strobe we should switch on the the strobe um, lights let me switch this off okay so any personnel in, in ground will notice that we are just almost ready to to switch the the engines okay this is indicating 20 
any people that that would be around our plane that we are just almost ready to switch our engines we need to do this otherwise we don't have um, avionics or, or things like that okay um, and then just we we start okay and we'll see that quickly all these pressures start going up done okay um, next oil pressure we need to check it it's in, in the green area which is what is important between 2 and 5 uh, psi what else engine instruments uh, are all, all fine chokes are off and we already had them off which is here okay we are going to increase a little the our revolutions to some value between 2000 and 2500 so we can increase a little our oil temperature that's why it's important that these are uh, revolutions that the plane would, would already start uh, rolling okay that's why it's important to have the parking brakes at this stage the oil temperature should increase between 90 and 110 that's the normal mm, we've got fuel pressure yes here on five and we've finished the um, pre-taxi checklist okay then next step radio and avionics switch it on as we are going to do a bfr flight we are going to leave our squawk code at uh, 2000 we should contact with the uh, atc ask them for permission and all of that we are going to ignore this but at least we need to ensure that we set up the the altimeter okay the altimeter now it's at um, we set it manually from here at around 10 30 29 9 so let's look at the current 80s in our airport which is this we click on details i click m to open the moving maps okay and we've got sky clear here in age it's 10 13 so yes let's go and adjust it 10 13 okay it's already here otherwise we could do it just clicking here as you can see the altimeter will change depending on our configuration okay really important so if we know that the this airport the height above um, sea level is uh, 1080 we know that when we are approaching to to here we are just almost in the in the ground if by any reason it goes also dark it's it's important okay or, or cloudy next thing well we've got altimeters a uh, direction indicator yep we should align this to our current heading which we can see again here if we click on the plane we've got a heading of 145 okay so we are going to adjust this to 145 as now it's well this is the heading of the runway which with this uh nope i'm moving this one um, orange i'm going to leave it here for later we will maybe readjust it which is the heading of the runway it will serve for the purpose of a reference and then we are in heading 145 so this is 150 so it should be somewhere around here okay we can check it with the compass that we've got uh, above then now we've got the heading of the aircraft fully fully oriented and um, yep parking brake now we control them off just let's as you've seen the oil temperature now is uh, fine while well, we've done all these procedures we will move a uh, throttle to idle and then we would be ready to to taxi okay so to taxi what the first thing that we do of course is just to remove the parking brake which we are going to do right now and increase a little then the, the speed just to 2000 revolutions should be enough we need to turn right okay yes slightly we should never while we are in platform exceed uh, by any meanings 10 knots okay and always be careful that there's no one around us 
this is a very quiet airport so nothing should happen but who knows yeah it's important to follow the lines okay well in this aircraft i'd say just in in, in any aircraft to follow the taxi lines on on the on the center it's important especially on, on big planes otherwise yes you could end up with your wheels outside of the taxiways okay so let's try to follow we are doing the parking just we look again at all the indicators it, everything seems fine oil temperature while we are on ground usually it's increasing I don't know why I've seen it even at 120 or 30 I don't think there's anything wrong so it shouldn't increase farther so it usually stays within 90 or 110 probably it's a, a book from the developers who knows okay and then let's move to our runway 6 which is the the one that we've determined as the active runway there's no wind so in this case uh, there's no discussions this is the usual runway in in Castellon airport okay because it's the only one uh, provided with a uh, ILS okay Let's continue our taxi. Once we've left platform, I think that we can increase the speed even to 20 knots, but we are not going to, to do it for, for for now. Because yes, we need to keep turning. And while you are turning, it's, it's really uncomfortable for the passengers to turn um, the plane if you are driving past uh, 10 knots, also, which is around 20 kilometers per hour. Okay. Then before we go into the stop line, we'll do the before take of a checklist. We are going to do in this case a circuit to our right. Okay. So let's break here. Yep. That's also important. I should have tested the brakes as soon as I started rolling. Uh, it would be a pity just coming here and then noticing that we don't have uh, the brakes. Uh, by whatever reason uh, not working okay so we set up the parking brake it's on engine instruments a check everything is uh, as you would expect okay oil temperature between 19 and 110 this is what I told you that it's increasing cylinder head temperature in green nine, nine between 90 and 135 which is here so it's also fine Oil pressure between 2 and 5 bars, which is, uh, sorry, oil pressure is this one, okay, which is also fine, we've got 3, and fuel pressure between 0, 15, which is here, and um, 0, 4, so, which is also fine, battery is uh, between 12 and 14, and I'm pretty much almost on, on 0, okay. Um, you are going to do now a test for the engine. We will increase our speed, uh, sorry, not, not our speed, our revolutions to 4000 step by step. Okay, and we are going to test our ignition systems. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, yes. Okay, then for doing that, we take a look on our revolutions. It's almost a 4000 okay Just let me go back to here and then um, yep yeah. we click on ignition and we move it to left and the revolution should fall but not more than 300 okay as we've done now we move it to right again it's moved the difference between left and right never should exceed um, 120 revolutions. So in this case, we've noticed everything is fine. We could again then move back the throttle to idle and leave this on both. Okay, the fuel selectors to to both flight controls. We do the latest checks, um, flaps. We set them to take off, which is around 15 degrees. Okay, yes, let's be sure. A little bit more. It's here, this needle. Okay. 
uh, trim again checked on center seat belts are fastened let's see the girl yes she's got the seat belt fastened canopy it's closed and locked transponder we move it to alt so from this point we'll be sending signals okay to the ATC and as we are going to enter the runway we should switch our strokes strokes should be on from before I don't know oh yes it's because I pushed the, the brakes and the navigation lights okay yes then let's remove a parking brake push gentle on the throttle And then let's enter and align. Okay. Rotation speed is around 48 knots. So once we finish this white line here, we'll initiate our, our rotating. Okay. And the um, optimum um, ascent speed should be around 68 uh, knots once the plane is completely cleaning and not exceeding 60 while we are with, with flaps. Okay. We want to reach a uh, safe altitude for at least uh, 300 uh, feet which would be 1400 feet let's break now okay and once we are around here we could uh, remove our flaps so circuit is just running on hypodrome okay we'll do now we'll do now the upwind leg usually the wind will be blowing from our front or just from any direction within this uh, so coming as, as we look at here, yeah, this is the last thing. <coughs> Sorry that I would like to adjust, just to be sure that we are aligned with the runway. What I've done is this orange, okay? So I know what's the um, orientation of the of the heading of this runway. It's around 57 or 58 degrees. I'm not fully fully sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so the the wind. That's that's what I was saying. Would be blowing from around 330 knots up to 140 okay so it means in this direction okay uh, to take this as the active runway so then what we need to do is just release brakes increase the speed check that everything is normal look at again the oil temperature okay we gently increase and we can go and full throttle never exceed uh, so for takeoff it's, it's valid but we should never exceed this 5000 feet per minute I forgot to yeah okay we've already taken taken off I forgot just the uh, rotation speed okay just let's increase here we put on the vertical speed indicator we'll try to climb at around 500 feet per, per minute following the runway heading until we reach around 2500 feet okay that will be our closing altitude for for today once we come here okay i'll check this the inclination just to increase my speed and then we'll start removing flaps okay then we should look before we start our turn to the cross wind as it will be a circuit to the right we should check on our left that there's no one okay we should also do the same for the right there's no one around us so then let's initiate the, the turn i'm going to pause it to explain you something this is a trick very simple if i know that this was my runway heading i should know that now i should turn to here okay to one five zero degrees so it means that this orange will stay here okay this orange uh, needle will stay here so i know that i'll be flying the crosswind uh, leg okay and through that i expect then just to reach 2500 feet okay let's remove the pose okay also important just uh, turning should take us around 30 seconds okay for that we look at here these lines are telling us whether we are doing a, a leveled uh, uncoordinated uh, turn okay 
I'm not pulling anything, we keep climbing and then I'm starting to level off okay and then we can start playing a little with the trim to ensure that we fly at uh, 2500 feet which is going to be our arcade altitude okay for, for this circuit because I want to reduce my pressure Okay. We decrease our throttle a little to around 4000 RPM. Okay. Uh, let's try to keep this 2500. I must say it's much more difficult to keep the, the altitude uh, while you're flying. Um, on a simulator than when you are flying with the real plane. Okay. Just trimming the plane, that's the noise that probably you are hearing. Okay, now if I lift all the pressure on the joystick, yeah. Okay, we could also decrease a little just the speed. Okay, and then we should now be ready to turn to the downwind uh, leg. Okay, so again, we look left, no one's coming right and now the um, the orange uh, needle should point into here okay to 330 where we'll be following just a course of uh, 240 there is okay just show that the turn is uh, coordinated we put the mediterranean sea on our left Again, if we do a coordinated turn, it should take around 30 seconds. Okay, we are finishing, just correcting, and that's it. Okay, let me show you the autopilot. Okay, once we are on the 2500 and we are stabilized, we could, in theory, I just use again the, the heading, click on altitude, and it should move slightly the rudder by itself to keep the, the altitude that we are flying now which is 2500 okay so now I just only I'm moving the the wings to left and, and right okay in our rider we should have the airport more or less Let me up here Here we can see. Okay. While we are doing this, then we should already start um, showing that the oil temperature now has decreased to 90 and 100. We do again the cylinder heat temperature, it's, it's fine. We check that everything is as it should. Okay. Just in this more left correction because I want just to be sure that I'm flying in the opposite direction okay in the downwind neck where else we look at the fuel pressure we've got uh, enough pressure and everything is fine okay and then now we should start preparing for our descent for that what we am going we are going to, to do and it's even when we are flying the face downwind okay it's just remove uh, the autopilot we'll hear some noise which is an alert about it okay as you've seen this is what what happened we are going to start reducing our speed okay and we do not want to descend uh, beyond the uh, 2000 feet okay if i reduce my throttle the plane as you see already starts falling Okay, so we are going to adjust again the trim and we could start our descent almost with an uh, idle because what we need is really to reduce the speed as I've told you before the speed for opening the um, start opening the flight the, sorry the, the flaps it's around here okay 60 or 70 I apologize for doing this completely discoordinated okay let's turn 
right now to heading 330 okay. the scenario that I'm using is um, the ultra high definition scenery for, for Spain I could also probably leave you the links below we stop now our turn ok, to be stabilized at that 3.30 yes, I cannot see the runway because it's where it is, where it is, where it is so let's what well, we buy this here Somewhere around there. Okay, it's behind the mountain. Mm -hmm. As you've seen, as soon as I start flying from the external views, I might lose my, my head. Okay, we are at 2000 feet. What we want to do is just keep that 2000 feet. Okay, so the speed starts decreasing and then we'll open the start opening the, the flaps. Okay, if we keep this head speed starts decreasing and we start opening flaps look the movement that the plane has done it's reducing speed starting to fold the nose okay so as that's creating really lots of um, persistence we should increase our throttle now okay let me check if we already have the runway inside i hope we do then let's start our turn to the to the right and hopefully we should be aligned to the final well before starting the descent we should have contacted with the ATC okay to ask the corresponding permission just to to land okay now the yeah there we've got the the runways just here okay I distracted myself uh, just with the with the torque and I should have started before the base torque which was the, the previous one okay we are really low so let's increase a little our altitude or at least not decrease it anymore okay until we can see the puppy lights we are more or less on a heading of 30 degrees to intercept the runway let's start the turn slightly speed is fine for the approach 50 knot we could increase a little the revolution or the throttle okay all the moves should be very quiet and then we could start our before landing uh, checklist we ensure that if our fuel pump is uh, on landing lights they are still on uh, there's no traffic okay let's check we'll move down to full okay hold on to full our flaps we could check them through the window they are fine and we continue the the approach okay the optimum touchdown speed is around 40 knots Okay, so I'm increasing a little our speed and, and then we are flying the long final. Okay, I don't know, I guess it, we are at around uh, one mile and a half far from the runway heading. Okay, there's no winds, so minimum correction should be, should be done. I'm trying to keep this height until I can see the puppy lights, which should be just there we still have the four of them in red okay as you can see them here so it means that we are very low yet so I will keep this okay Now I think that we've got one white. Yes, now we are in the glide stop, okay? So we start reducing our revolutions. The plane will start uh, 
falling okay as, as, as if we keep them uh, well the only thing that we'll be doing is just increasing our, our speed okay so one way of just descending is just to cut the throttle a little we need to ensure that we keep as much as we can the two puppy lights uh, white and, and red this is when I think a bug from explain yeah they are fine because when when it's daylight it's, it's really difficult to to look at them and, and, and visualize them them clearly okay let's keep the alineation with the heading we are in short final at this stage uh, we should be fully authorized to to land by the ATC We've done also the before landing checklist and then just yes, it's flying the, the plane. Okay, you see more or less at 300 feet per minute. We can keep the speed. I'm going again to cut a little the throttle. I don't want it to go under 50 because then it loses um, it loses the speed very 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 quick. Okay, so I want to ensure that I'm not below 50 knots. We will decrease it when we are just almost ready to touch down. Okay. A little low now again. Yep, there's only one white here. And we'll be finishing this this flight. Pretty soon it's been a long tutorial. Okay. Let's realign. Okay, here we go. We should uh, touch down after the puppy lights. Okay, which are here. So this is usually the touchdown area. Now it's when I'm starting to reduce my my throttle. Okay, just to prepare for the flare. It should be this. Now I got almost full throttle. Yep, and here we go. Okay, it was a good landing. We break a little. We try to keep the center line 116 feet per minute, so that's pretty cool. And we've got the plane already stopped, so remove brakes. We should be authorized to taxi back to the to the stand. Okay, to the parking place. So increase throttle a little. We could do just a quick turn, 180 degrees here. We don't need uh, much space to to maneuver this plane. I think it's only six meters, and the only amount of uh, weight that we need to to turn the plane fully 180 knots. Okay. At this time, I'm assuming that they've been authorized to the ATC to, to do this backtrack okay and just I will park somewhere soon so we can already start with the after landing checklist okay we should move up our flaps They are already up. The transponder, as soon as we left the runway, will be on off or standby at least. And then just uh, be ready for the engine shutdown. Yeah. Anyway, just maybe I guess that you are bored, and if you've arrived here, you wouldn't mind to continue watching the the video. It's going to be almost an hour of recording just now. Yes, 59 minutes I've been recording. So let's go back to to the platform. I 
that you've enjoyed it and I really like this 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 uh, ultra light uh, model quite a lot and, it, and it's very cheap I think it only cost me around 20 euro or something like that it's it's very very realistic okay hope that you also like this this review um, come on I don't know who's wishing <laughs> oh, to finalize this you or, or myself Okay, I'll continue straight. The general aviation parking area is on the top left, but just we are going to park here. As I've said, this airport is really, really, really realistic. Okay, we are going to park this time in gate number three. Okay. So then, engine shutdown. Okay, electrical equipment. Except the strobe lights, everything should be switched off. Except the strobe lights, okay. Ignition switch is um, off, so we will switch off the engines now. Okay, the master switch and the alternative uh, switch both off. Fuel bulbs off. Uh, parking brake, we need to ensure again that it's on. The chocks, just when we are out, we could uh, install them and then the post flight um, check would be well, from outside the plane, take the chokes, place them under our wheels, cover again the um, pitot um, tube, lock the controls, the wing. Usually, I like to put it like that in, in, in vertical. Sure that the canopy is uh, again closed and locked. Lock it with the keys and well, basically that's it. I hope that guys you've you've enjoyed this uh, fabulous uh, airplane. I hope that you've also enjoyed the airport Castellan and I hope that you've also enjoyed and learned something about the flying a BFR and, and doing a, a circuit. Okay, so see you soon. See you next time. Bye, greetings.